Clancy's Rainbow Six is a franchise based on the late author Tom Clancy's novel Rainbow Six. Its success launched into a multimedia frenzy which is best known for its video game series, first introduced to the public in August of 1998, simply known as Rainbow Six. The name Rainbow Six is actually derived from the many nationalities, hence the Rainbow and the Six refers to the unit commander. Rainbow Six is a counter-terrorist organization hosted by NATO and funded by the Department of the Interior. The latest game in the series is Rainbow Six Siege. Unlike the games before it, there isn't a campaign, but strangely enough, there's a story behind it. Take a look at the intro. A bit of a heads up. I couldn't get the voices to work during the recording, but I do have subtitles. Now, wouldn't you think that this would have set the tone for the campaign? But guess what? We get swerved. There's no campaign whatsoever. While there is a single player mode named Situations, which serves as a training guide, it would have been nice to see a campaign. After all, the game's created some really intense campaign modes and not just in Rainbow Six. Now that I think about it, the cancel game Patriots and this game should have been fused together to make one game. Now that would have worked out perfectly. Going back to situations, you're given a list of objectives to complete and by doing so, you'll get stars. You're also given a specific operator for the mission at hand. Okay, I can understand getting the player comfortable for the actual multiplayer, but this in my opinion isn't quite enough to satisfy. It would have been nice to have some AI squad mates to help, but nope, you fly solo. Having this and additional objectives would have added some depth. Now that I think about it, games like Counter-Strike and Team Fortress 2 have teammate AI support. Games like Black Ops 2 and the more recent Black Ops 3 have teammate AI support as well. Interestingly, the white masks are shown on both offense and defense modes, so why not use the same code to do the same for the teammate AI? It would have made perfect sense. If by some odd but slim chance that it does happen in the near future, there's a 90% chance that Ubisoft will be getting some of the heat taken off of them, not to mention generate user interest. Because not everyone plays multiplayer, and it would be nice to have some downtime with some AI squad mates. The graphics for the most part, as mentioned in the beta video, don't make a lasting impression, and quite honestly, it still doesn't. I'm not saying they're bad, I'm saying they don't look and capture next generation feel. The character models and environments aren't too bad, but once again, don't make an impression. The one good trait is that the environment is destructible and it does add a bit of strategy to the game. The sound for the most part is okay, but nothing over the top. The voice acting is also average at best. The gun sounds are the highlights, but whether they sound like their real life counterpart is debatable. Controls for the most part aren't so different from past Rainbow Six games. You have your basic first person shooter with the semi-usual leans left and right, so nothing out of the ordinary here. Gameplay is best described like this, deja vu. They say that imitation is the most sincerest form of flattery, but for some odd reason, I felt that this game was slapping Counter-Strike in the face. Let me explain. If you've played Counter-Strike before, chances are you'll notice a bit of similarity. For starters, it's restricted to 5 versus 5 only. Why such a limited number? Counter-Strike can offer so much more in terms of number of people playing. Another thing you'll notice is once you die, you don't respawn. While I do admit that this does create tensions in matches, Counter-Strike made it look good. Here, not so much. Speaking of spawning, whose bright idea was it to create multiple spawning points? This was something that shouldn't have been done. Multiple spawn points serve defenders better, but still, just have one spawning point for both attackers and defenders. Another thing to notice is that the game modes themselves replicate what Counter-Strike does, but for some weird reason rubbed me the wrong way and I don't know why. 
Now, don't get me wrong, the gameplay is well done, but doesn't quite leave the impact that Counter-Strike does. One thing I noticed is having Team Deathmatch as a prefix, fruitless. After all, each game mode, be it Disarm, Bomb, or Hostage Rescue, is essentially a Team Deathmatch in its own right. What sets this game apart from Counter-Strike is the very popular Terrorist Hunt mode, but this time there are quite a few restrictions. For starters, you don't get an option of picking a map. Next, whichever game mode the game picks is the one you play. That's pretty harsh. On a positive note, you do get to play as either an attacker or defender depending on which game mode is given. You know, when I played Rainbow Six Vegas' Terrorist Hunt mode, the game let me choose which map to play on, and in Rainbow Six 3, I get to pick how many terrorists showed up. That is something that this game is missing. You know what's really unusual about Terrorist Hunt this time around? This serves as a better tutorial than Situations. What also sets this game apart is the Renown system. After each match, whether you win, lose, or draw, you get experience points and currency called Renown. You get to use these on operatives and attachments for their respected weapon. There are 10 attackers and 10 defenders. Each operative brings something unique to the battlefield. Haven't we seen this before? Oh yeah, Team Fortress 2, except that all 9 operatives in that game are available at the get-go, and all 9 operatives can do offense and defense. The one thing that hasn't changed is that the servers aren't exactly user friendly. This was a problem in the beta and it looks like they're still problematic. It has a bad habit of disconnecting people from their game. Is it just me or does Ubisoft seem to have a habit of creating problematic products, be it buggy games or laggy servers? Overall, Rainbow Six Siege isn't a terrible game, but it feels undercooked. With an emphasis on multiplayer and a lack of single player options, you should wait until there's a price drop. Paying $60 for this game isn't worth it. If you want a game that's worth your money, get any Counter-Strike game instead, or get Team Fortress 2 because it's free. Rainbow Six Siege gets 3 stars out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two beauties right here. If you want to subscribe to my videos, click this button here. And if you want to see more of my videos, click this button over here.